Welcome everyone. This is again APA Advanced Planning Analytics uh, Cesar Ramos here. Another video. Uh, this is an extension or an elaboration of our uh, engineering de deliverables in uh, Primavera. The last time I think I showed, uh, I posted a, a video and a blog, but I didn't really show any type of demonstration. So this will be more or less a demonstration. Okay, so to begin, I guess let's, uh, if we re reference back the website where I posted the original, <clears throat> here I described uh, the components for deploying uh, earn value and uh, the, the uh, attributes necessary. I talked about the phases development in detail. This directly coincides with a presentation I did uh, a couple of times last year. One was uh, this shows your deliverables over uh, time for for an EPC project through construction. It was called rolling wave planning and I also provide that. I've also provided a project wheel that shows the phases the stage gates and the phases and then down below the associated deliverables for that phase and also the uh, flow chart that's represented here the deliverables through construction so they all kind of go hand in hand i've also uh, talked about rules of credit it's important for uh earned value and then of course my example in p6 the activities, deliverables, if you will, and the distribution graphs, of course. And in summary, I didn't really provide any demonstration, which is what I'm doing today. So moving forward into my, uh, my uh, P6 file here, you can see all my deliverables are there by discipline, kind of very simple. I call it a fragment because I use it for multiple projects, multiple units. I'm going to open my layout. And uh, I'm going to open a slightly different layout where I've organized it by an activity code. This activity code, you can see they're all collapsed. And beneath it are activities. See here. So if I expand all, you'll see that the activities associated with that deliverable fall under that deliverable type. And I'll show you the code there. Okay, deliverable, process flow diagram. And I created a set of deliverables types by discipline. And I associated each activity with that deliverable type. So in essence, the activities are acting as a rule of credit. So I added this estimated weight that uh, column here. It's, it's out of P6. It's part of the top-down estimation uh, functionality. I added it through here under general. And I added a value to it that represented the man hours associated with doing a deliverable or a uh, document set of deliverables. So I'm using them as a weight factor so that I can add man hours later when I resource load the schedule. And I use top down estimation once that's applied. Right before that, I have to show you one more thing under WBS. I also weighted the disciplines according to the budgets. This is important because the system takes the estimated weight of the WBS first, and by default, it leaves it at one, so you may wanna check that. Then it'll add the distribution of hours <clears throat> across, uh, let me go back. It'll add the distribution of hours here, you see, I've already done this. Uh, according to the WBS first, 
Then it takes the hours beneath that WBS and uses the estimated weight here to distribute those man hours across. So it's a weighting of a weighting. It's a weight factor of a weight factor. Okay. Moving on to a separate layout, I use here it's kind of the same, but I use collapse bars uh, to show the schedule, to show the uh, green and reds, critical and non critical, ongoing. And I have a stacked histogram, right? So if you got a top down estimation, now if you load those hours in that and apply, those hours get distributed back to the activities. I only do this the first time once. It's really what it's for. It's a fragment, and then I reload it. But once everything is loaded and you baseline, then you can start to progress the work. So here I've got my uh, curve, cumulative curve. And uh, up top, you'll see the, uh, the periodic values here, the planned periodic values. And you'll see up top the cumulative values and earned values, which is blank because I haven't earned anything or actuals for that matter. And I use stored period performance to capture the actual periodic performances. Okay. It's a whole nother video, another conversation, but I, I emulate percentages by taking the full value as a denominator minus two decimals. <clears throat> and you can see here, this is just on top is the activity usage spreadsheet uh, below. You have to do the same math. You have to take the um, denominator minus two decimal points. So it has to divide by that to emulate a percentage. You see here is man hours. I'm going to convert that and it'll look like percentages. And I have the symbol of the unit of measure. So if you expand below, I organize it by WBS and deliverable type. So another view that you could apply when when uh, when you're performing your work, and you can see here that <clears throat> uh, process is 11% of the job, or 11% uh, of the entire project. Mechanical is about 13%, so forth and so on. You can pause the video to look at it further. <laughs> but here you can see that this is just uh, the same division down at the increment using the budget minus two decimals and uh, emulating, it's emulating a percentage. <clears throat> Excuse me, throat's kind of scratchy. Okay, so going to this other layout here, I like this layout a lot. I use it called EAC. Uh, it's got my planned man hours, earned man hours, actual man hours, my remaining man hours, and my uh, variances in man hours, my earned percent, planned percent, actual percent, SPI, CPI. I show my total float, budget at completion, estimate at completion, estimate to complete. And you'll notice that the, the, the activities here, <clears throat> uh, I renamed them. I've taken them out of the attributes and then I renamed them. Right, so uh, activity percent complete. If you notice this one here, and it's not a natural column or uh, attribute, what I've had to do is I've created a global change to emulate a percentage of actuals. Right, so. But first of all, let me close this out, close it, go back. I created a user defined field here as a number for activities, of course. And then I uh, created a global change. And under this percentage here, I've taken my actual labor units, which is cumulative, and my budgeted labor cumulative. Uh, labor units and I've created the division. I may have to go back and possibly multiply times 100 so that it looks as a whole number. It's possible. I haven't uh, actualized anything yet here. 
but if I do, it's easy. You go back and change your global change. But in this layout, you'll find that there is uh, the list of deliverables and the AKA rules of credit. If it applies to that deliverable, it's emulating it in a way. So under this layout, I can actualize, I can update, and I can review my uh, performance all in one shot. Plus below out here, I have the uh, usage profile. Make sure that <clears throat> your denominator's there. And uh, also make sure that your uh, symbol, unit of measure, to make it visible if you do this and it doesn't show up, uh, you have to go to user preferences. Make sure you show your unit label, okay? That's where it shows up. In case you don't find it, that's where it shows up when you put that symbol in uh, in that box right here. That's where it'll uh, be applied. So <clears throat> this is one of my favorite layouts. It's practical, it's useful, and if you have a methodology that's consistent and you establish your rules of credit and how they're applied, uh, it works really well. So going back to my deliverable layout, I'm going to show you how I made these bars. In case you're wondering, some of you may already know. So to show these bars collapsed, all you have to do is go to your bars and uh, and I, first I change the uh, thickness of the bars and then I showed the bar when collapsed. Okay, and then I took my summary bar and I went ahead and modified it so that it looks different than it typically does. But the important thing is to remember that uh, here to have your bar labels off because when you do collapse them, those, uh, those labels will show up when it's collapsed and looks really messy. At least this way it looks clean. The bars show up, critical, non-critical. And also I... Typically add my uh, percent complete, which is performance, is what I use to show performance of work. So I usually add that to my layout as I progress the schedule. So you can see here, uh, useful uh, layouts here, methodology, it's up to you guys. If you want to emulate what I do, then that's great. Uh, but I'm going to rename this, by the way, here to earned percent. And I'm going to put it in the center. Hit OK. So now it says earned percent, but it's really the performance percent complete. Uh, I just didn't want to take up a lot of space or I wanted to be clear about what that column is. So I thank you. Once again, thank you for uh, visiting the website. Thank you for the comments. Uh, again, this is not an instructional video. If you want instruction, if you want uh, um, some guidance, uh, there are websites that do this. Or if you hire me, well, I'll do it for you. But it'll be in a different environment. It'll be a virtual web, online blog, or classroom style. But this is strictly a demonstration. Feel free to use any of the methodologies you've seen. They're not unique. Everybody does a different flavor of it, but I've tried to put some uh, action and clarity to it so that you could apply it. And uh, have a happy new year.